The journey in America continues as I present fictional identities to respected and influential figures behind powerful belief systems and see how easily they'll endorse me as the real thing. I used to be a full-on happy, clappy Christian until my mid-twenties, and then I started to realize that my belief was just as prone to circular logic and self-fulfillment as all the New Age nonsense which bugged me. And then reading the New Testament as a historical document finally rid me of any religious belief. But if I can convert people through non-spiritual methods, how many other people are out there doing the same thing in their own way? And this isn't about criticizing anyone's belief, but I'm amazed at how quickly and easily we can be made to adopt a belief that we're told is universally true and part of our identity. Religions tend to encourage either high energy crowd activity or candlelit monotony to invoke a suggestible state amongst the congregation. Many revivalist preachers seem to have a magical touch that brings the power of the Lord into a person. People are reported to suddenly fall back as if they've been swept off their feet by the Holy Spirit. I've come to Rhode Island as James Lawrence, who after a dramatic religious awakening has been left with the ability to convert people with a touch. I'm feeling a little bit anxious about this one, but it's, it's made it more exciting. But it's great, you know, will they say to me, even with all of that, will they say, is this just a trick? If they say, is it a trick, I will say yes, and I will thank them so much for, uh, for, for actually asking that question. So I'm here to meet a guy called Kurt Nordheim, who's a very successful, very affable, professional minister and author here in New England. And his speciality is in evangelizing to immigrant communities. Let me read you here a quote from the ministry. Uh, the huge influx of foreign people groups into this nation can be viewed in two ways. They can be seen as a threat to our way of life, both spiritually and culturally, or they can be viewed as an opportunity for evangelism. My understanding of evangelism is that it's done in relationships. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm not going to leave the building here tonight and when I go to the hotel, start talking immediately to the, to the person behind the desk and saying, mm -hmm. do you know Jesus Christ mm -hmm. or something like that. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I try to form relationships uh, through whatever means that I can, joining, joining a, a racquetball club, uh, playing tennis, uh, inviting them home for dinner, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing. Will Kurt believe in my gift and will he endorse me? My name is James Lawrence. Um, none of you will know me. You wouldn't know me if you were British either. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the people you see here responded to an advertisement to come to a discussion on spirituality. They're almost all atheists and non-believers. I shall convert them with just a touch. Um, you don't believe in anything? I mean, are you kind of like... Yeah, what I, was... I don't believe in God, I don't believe in angels, I don't believe in, you know, guardian angels, mm -hmm. fairy godmother, you know, ghosts, you know, mm -hmm. relatives coming back from, you know, the dead to give you, you know, special messages to make yeah. you feel better. I, I really don't believe in those things either, <laughs> but I'm, you know, yeah. Everyone in my family was a different sort of religion. My grandmother was a devout Catholic. You know, my grandfather was Protestant. <laughs> you know, my mother was Mormon. You know, and all those things tried to get forced on me, and I just never, I don't know. But then just be honest, okay? As skeptical? Be honest? I... I guess I kind of understand the feeling that they were talking about. Yeah? In what way? That... Uh, my grandma always used to tell me that, um, when she was praying before she went to bed, when she got up in the morning, she always felt like she got, um, she called it her inner hug. Huh. And, uh, she said it just kind of felt like two arms wrapping itself, you know, around your heart, around your lungs, just an inner hug. <laughs> and, uh, I, I guess I kind of understand a little little more what she was talking about. Some of the people have left because they were uncomfortable with the instant conversion. And I'm just going to go back in in a minute and see if anyone's left because I want to carry on. I want to see if I can do this. 
but for the moment it's a bit of drama. Um, we had a bit of an interruption there because I think some people got a little bit uncomfortable with that and have, have left. So if it's all right, we'll just carry on with you guys. Thank you for staying. It's fair enough. So just want to carry on talking about what we were, what we were talking about. Are you feeling all right? You still? Yeah, it's like I said, it's just kind of a, a weird feeling. Um, do you believe in God? Do you think this would be a good thing to do, or do you think it's just self-deception? I think if it works for them, you know, I'm not going to discourage people from their beliefs, but how could you believe or worship in a higher being, you know, that they choose to call God, that's supposed to be loving and supposed to be merciful and kind, but yet, you know, and then they talk about free will and this and that. Well, it wasn't a three-year-old's free will to die of you know, leukemia mm. and things of that nature. That's what makes me just don't buy it. I, okay. All right. Um, are you happy for me to try this with you too? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can, can you just come around here for me? Maybe if you just stand there for me, but face, uh, let me just put you there like that. Okay, just put your feet together for me. And I want you to know you're not going to hurt yourself or anything like that, all right? Mm -hmm. I will catch you when this happens. Just want you to face that way and uh, just, you know, just let whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Stay there for a minute. Sit up for a second. Talking very skeptically a moment ago about any kind of belief in God, you said it's that you know you, you couldn't believe in that at all. How do you feel now about that? Be honest. Hmm. Be honest. I think that um, I would be, I don't want to call myself ignorant, but I would be, um, I wouldn't be doing the right thing due to what just happened and occurred to me if I didn't, you know, think that there was a possibility that maybe my belief and maybe my opinions um, aren't correct. Okay. So... You're saying you are now ready to accept the idea that there's a God that you wouldn't be prepared to accept beforehand? I'm not putting words in your mouth, I just want you yeah. to clarify um, for me. Due to especially what just occurred with me, yeah, there, there, is, there is reason to, to explore. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Just sit back down for me, Sean. Thank you very much. Um, in fact, I tell you what, could you all just stand up for me? All right. Hands up if you believe in God at this moment. Apart from the people I've just spoken to. Put your hands up if you believe in God. Be honest. Okay. That's one of you. Great. Thank you. Apart from the people I just spoke to. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Now, put your feet together. Just all of you, just close your eyes for me. So, there is something here in this room. There is something here. And as I talk to you now, I want you, whatever you imagine there, whatever that spirit is, just to feel it in this room and feel it like a pressure moving into you. Moving into you around your heart, your chest and your shoulders, against your face and your eyes. And as I talk to you, I want you to feel that moving into you. And not to fight it, but to welcome it and to embrace it and to allow it to move you in whatever way. And as I talk to you, just let that get stronger, let that feeling get stronger and stronger and really feel it now, just moving into you. Moving into you. One at a time, just feeling it right. Just, just embrace it, just let it fall in. Good. Do you believe in God now? Yes. Yes, nice and clear. Do you believe in God? Yes, Be honest. I do. Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Be honest with me, all right? Be honest with me. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? 
Yes, very much so. Do you believe in God? There is something. There is something. Do you believe in God? Definitely. And you? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Kurt left with half the group after the first conversion, but is still impressed. I wondered if there's not something just in, in his body, uh, an energy, electrical <laughs> impulse uh, that doesn't zap people. I cannot explain the warm hug that the one young woman experienced, uh, except that uh, maybe that is God speaking to her, that, that he loves her. So I, I do know people who've come to Christ uh, with a radical uh, conversion that is very different from most conversions, um, but nothing quite like James. <laughs> he was impressed, but to his credit, wanted to meet again before he'd offer a full public endorsement. Yeah, the endorsement's important because the ability to show that even as a charlatan, you can quite easily um, ingratiate yourself into that, into that world and be part of that fiction, if it is fiction.